hello my name is Lexi and this is my daughter Addison Addison Grace so Addison has a disability called hydrocephalus it's a brain abnormality where your brain around your brain the fluid builds up and it doesn't get drained properly with her case her brain there is a cyst and the cyst was blocking the drainage of her cerebrospinal fluid and so as she was developing in the womb it just kept collecting and collecting and just pooling in her back ventricles and because of that her head shape and size is very large it's very hard for her motor development wise because it's a odd shape it's an odd shape and it's very heavy for her but she's really doing so well i basically wanted to make this video for the parents that get bad news at their 20 week anatomy scan ultrasound um whenever i found out that she had hydrocephalus at the 20 week ultrasound I was honestly devastated. I had never known anyone. Hey, baby. Here you go. I had honestly never known anyone who had honestly any kind of disability or abnormality, especially in their pregnancy. So I was shocked. I was emotional as it is being pregnant. Um, and so I immediately went online to find some videos or any research on people's experiences or stories and there was honestly very slim amounts and the ones that I did find were very negative they weren't very positive outcomes and that just made me even more scared and I really did not know what to do the doctors had misdiagnosed her initially with having a stroke and they told me that her life quality would be very very low and i honestly i didn't know what to do i on one hand i was like i don't want to have her bo be born and have all these struggles in life and know that I could have taken that struggle away from her and prevented her from having to experience and live a life like that. And on the other hand, I felt like my religious, my faith, um, I really felt like, you know what, like God's going to take care of this. He made me her mother for a reason. Like I just need to have faith and trust that everything's going to work out the way that it's supposed to be. If she is special needs, then I am glad that I'm chosen to be the one to love and nurture her and give her all the extra care that she needs. That's just who I am, that's my personality, and I'm honestly honored to be chosen to be her mom. Um, so obviously, I chose to keep her, and I could not be more proud of myself for making that decision. And I'm in no way trying to persuade people to have an abortion or not. I would just like to share my story. I chose to keep her. And so when she when she was born, she was born at 37 weeks via C-section because her head obviously was too large to fit through the birth canal. And she was born early only because I started getting gestational hypertension and which is basically just high blood pressure during pregnancy and they didn't want it to turn into preeclampsia. So they went ahead and took her. She went straight into the NICU and she was in the NICU for seven days and then she got to go home. And mind you, they told us that she would not be able to breathe on her own, eat on her own, maintain her blood sugar levels, all of those like homeostasis things that your body naturally does to keep your body on a level um just to keep all your hormones and everything like that level they said that she didn't have those parts of her brain etc so 
she literally drank from a bottle she had a shunt placed at two days old and that was to drain the fluid since the cyst was blocking that this the shunt it is right here in the like behind her ear almost and it goes down her neck and over her belly and it drains into her belly so that helps drain the fluid and she recently got a ct and all of the fluid is drained she has no pressure of fluid on her brain so that means the shot worked yeah and she seriously is doing so well she immediately started drinking from a bottle which they said she would never do they said if we got to bring her home that she would be on all these feeding tubes breathing tubes she would have to get all these supplements for like hormones and everything and <clears throat> she does not she never has um they actually told us that there was a specific part the pituitary gland they said that she did not have that they didn't see it on the mri and when she was born her blood levels everything that that pituitary gland is responsible for all the levels were normal so obviously it was there and doing what it was supposed to be doing it just wasn't visible and we believe that that is because the the way that the neurosurgeon um explained it to me was you gonna go night night the way that the neurosurgeon explained it to us was that a brain at this age it's basically like a couch cushion so when you sit on it it gets flat obviously and then it pumps back up whenever someone stands up doesn't sit on it anymore so with her brain the fluid is putting pressure and squishing it to where it looks like things are smaller than they are or like they're not very visible because everything's just smushed together you can't see what is what kind of like when you take play-doh you just squish it you don't know what colors are in there exactly it's just all squished together you don't there's no shape or form it's just all squished so because of that they were not able to locate the pituitary gland which is responsible for a lot of your hormones and maintaining blood sugars all of that stuff so whenever she was born and they tested all of that they said well obviously she has it and it's doing correct it's doing everything correctly so, I know you. She's gonna take a nap. She's so tired. She got her four month shots yesterday, so she's a little bit out of it, huh? Yeah, you just wanna rest. Um, so, anyways, a lot of her brain, we believe, was honestly just not made visible because of all that pressure from the fluid and the cyst. So, with her doing everything that she's doing, like, she she wasn't even supposed to be here for more than two weeks. They said two weeks max. And they told me to bring a... They told me to bring a special outfit for her to basically be buried in, if that's what we would have been chosen. And honestly, just looking back, I remember being terrified to have this baby terrified because I my body was preparing to have a baby I was nesting you know all the things that your body goes through to give birth and prepare for that my body was going through and emotionally mentally and so my body was preparing for that but in my mind I had I had all those doctors telling me like all those specialists like hey it's probably it's not looking good we don't want to be morbid, but it's really not looking good. Um, prepare yourself for the very worst. And that's what they think is going to happen was the very worst. So it was very conflicting. And it was honestly the hardest thing I've ever gone through because I was just so torn. I didn't know what to think or how to feel. I was scared to get excited about her because I didn't want to be crushed and be told I told you so. But yeah, I honestly... Um, makes me emotional to think that she shouldn't even be here shouldn't even be here but i believe that 
Um, God has a plan for her and she is here for a reason. Yeah. And she makes everyone so happy. Everyone that she sees, she literally brings so much joy and hope to everyone. She's such a happy and calm baby. Like you guys, she is literally an angel on earth. And I, I know a lot of people probably say that about their children. And I believe all children are angels, obviously. But she really is such a good baby. She sleeps through the night. And she has ever since she was about two months old. And I'm not talking like just... And I'm not talking like just five or six hour stretches. She will literally sleep for 10 hours straight. And at first I was a little worried about that. But I looked it up and I talked to her doctor. It's all normal. It's just her routine. She does it every night. <clears throat> so we get lots of sleep. And it's honestly amazing. I'm so blessed to have that. Yes. Oh, We're so blessed with you, huh? I know, you want a good night night. She just ate a bottle, so she's ready to go night night. She's like, Mommy, why are you talking so loud? Why are you talking so loud? Yeah, I love you. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I basically just wanted to share this story with anyone, a parent who has received bad news at their 20-week ultrasound or at any point in their pregnancy. Um, I really just want to be a resource for people. I want people to be able to reach out to me if they have any problems. I really feel like this happened to me for a reason. And if there's one person that I can help that makes them feel a little bit more hopeful or have a little bit more faith or just gives them, I want everyone to be able to feel like they have both they have everything they need to make a sound decision and I want people to be able to see this side and this story to know that it can turn out different and you can really only see so much on MRIs and well fetal MRIs and <clears throat> ultrasounds. So I just want people to be able to hear our story and be able to make a sound decision if they are given that choice where the doctors are telling you where, where they're bringing up abortion or not and telling you the quality of life etc so i really just wanted i hope this can give someone out there hope or anyone else i just hope that it gives you brings you a smile on your face to see that there are still miracles that happen in this world and there is still a lot of good. There's good that can come out of the worst situation possible. And I'm not just saying that because obviously it turned out in my favor so far. I'm saying I had, I had to have faith and I trusted God and I just knew that no matter what happened, she's going to be okay. So many people have where they had a situation like mine, not specifically, but where something happened to their baby, they didn't make it. And then they have a rainbow baby, the next one. And that baby is like, it's called a rainbow baby for a reason. It's like the rainbow after the rain, the storm. And I just really feel like everything happens for a reason. And my story specifically, um, it turned out positive. I found positive in it. Like so many people could think, oh, well your baby might not be able to walk or she can't really hold her head up that well because her head is so heavy. And she had to have surgery and it's like, yes all of this is true but i am chosen to be her mom she is my baby and i'm gonna make sure that i love her so much and give her everything that i possibly can with with her on this earth what i want to make her time on this earth the most enjoyable and peaceful and happy that i can and i really feel like i'm doing a good job at it it's, i feel like I was truly destined to be her mother and I own it and we're just taking it day by day. We're taking advantage of every day we have with her and yeah, I just wanted to share that story with everyone. Um, if anyone has any questions or if you're going through something similar, 
seriously please comment down below i would love to talk to people and go more into depth about specific parts that happened during the pregnancy i just wanted to give an over overview very very there's a lot of details i did not share i just wanted to give an overview and just share the story so if you um were inspired by this story or if it gave you hope or it made you smile then give it a thumbs up for me and i will probably make more videos just with her as she gets older and updates to help other mamas out there other families and yeah because there's a lot more people in the hydrocephalus community than i thought there's a lot and there's not a lot of videos on this and i feel like there needs to be more of a community of an outlet on something other than um a facebook yeah a facebook um group so thank you guys i hope you have a blessed day and i will see you in the next video